afternoon, folks. Welcome to Two Guys in a Ride. I'm Nathan, and today we're here at the Back to the 50s Car Show at the Minnesota State Fair, where cars are uh, from 1964 backwards, uh, uh, so older than that. And today, uh, we've been walking around looking at some different cars, interviewing some people, and today we found Dan. Dan has got a what we call a COE, or cab over engine, uh, and it's a combination between a 1955... 1952 cab and a 1991 um, Class E motor home. So um, I'm just going to give you the mic and let you start telling us a little bit about why you decided to do this. I know it has something to do with seeing another one here, but why don't we start there? Okay, I actually uh, took an interest in this some time ago when I was uh, going through some Street Rider magazine, seeing some cab overs, seeing one on the grounds here back in 2003. I went to the swap meet, there was three of them there, they were sold, uh, got a hold of the guy that sold them, and he was from Clear Lake, Iowa, and he indicated he had two more, and so he sent me some uh, pictures by email, and I decided to go down and buy one of these, and I bought the cab, and this is a 52 cab, and uh, it was in rough shape. I had to do a lot of body work on it, and uh, as you can see, it turned out pretty good. Uh, the grill is a highlight of this because of the uh, the amount of time that I spent on each piece, grill piece, was about 10 hours to straighten them out and sand them down with a finish sand of about 3,000 grit, and then I had them chromed immediately, and uh, it turned out really nice. Um, overall, the bed on the truck was actually uh, designed by myself. I built it, and I give some weight. And it's diamond deck, as you can see, and uh, pretty much cleaned up the cab so it looks more, more modern, but still vintage. Uh, the paint is 2004 Corvette Torch Red, which has some orange uh, on the paint, in the paint, and it gives it a bright color once the sun shines. Um, overall, it's it's been great fun building it, a lot of hours, but certainly a lot of rewards. Uh, when we travel, we travel down the highway, cruising the same speed as everyone else, and uh, we get a lot of thumbs up, something I that some some people don't even know what it is, but it's certainly kind of a, a unique vintage, and you'll see more and more of these out uh, in the Ford style and also the Chevrolet style, but certainly great fun. Uh, my daughter had her, uh, let's see, 16 years ago when she was married, uh, she had this as part of her photo shoot in the uh, when she was doing it in the park. And kind of the neat thing about it is if you notice the chrome reflects and you can actually see what was going on in the background uh, when it was taken because it's, it's extremely shiny, nice and clean. So, you know, you talked about having to straighten out these uh, chrome pieces. Now... Originally, I mean, th to me, this looks very reminiscent of the of the you know Chevy and, and Ford pickups. Yes. It's kind of thing, but these were had been twisted or bent. Yes, yes. Oh, that's a lot of work to bend out. I mean, and to get them looking so nice, which I hope it comes across on camera, but it's just it's absolutely stunning. Ten, ten hours on each piece. Ten hours on each piece. Oh man! And then you had them chromed immediately. You said. Yes. Yes. So this truck has a little family history in it. Yes, it does. Yes. <laughs> with your, your with your daughter's wedding. Yes. Yep. And then uh, so um, now underneath uh, here um, you've got the, uh, the the engine from the RV. Yes. Uh, everything from the RV, the drivetrain, transmission, engine, radiator, everything uh, included in the wiring system as well, and it's all from the motorhome chassis. Okay. I tried to build it as cheap as I could, but still make it. Uh, runnable, usable, look at nice, make it look nice, and and uh, and uh, and it worked out quite well. The whole suspension system is the motorhome chassis. Okay, now um, you have a, a, an interesting story about getting this cab onto the frame because you did this at home. You didn't have a modern machine to pick up the cab and move it where you want it. You had to configure something. So tell us a little bit about what, how you got this on the frame. Okay, what I did is I. I did the complete uh, paint and work on the cab, the body work and all that stuff. That was separate from the chassis and uh, the chassis itself was all cleaned up, um, painted as well. 
So what I did is I loaded the uh, chassis on my uh, tandem axle trailer and then I, I, I placed it out in the front of my yard and then I took two uh, uh, cherry pickers, made some framework, lift the cab up, used a uh, 1973 John Deere 140 hydrostatic drive and uh, I used that to uh, uh, cable up to the chassis and that was used to pull the chassis off the trailer as I had the cab suspended and uh, then once I was lined up with the cab and the chassis then I was able to drop the cab on top of the chassis. It went great. It took a long time because I had to keep going back and forth to each of the, uh, the crane hoists that I used. Well, th this, I believe, would be the credit to you being a former teacher and a shop teacher at that and uh, being very precise and learning le learning from your own mistakes early on, what works and what doesn't, and just being patient. But um, tell us a little bit now, when you, there's, uh, and we'll show it in the video, there's some diamond plating that goes around the skirt uh, in the back of the truck. We can walk back there. And uh, Dan put this on, but it's not your ordinary, I, I think what you would... Uh, see on another vehicle. I mean, it looks like it, but Dan, tell us a little bit about how thick this is. The diamond deck is 3 16 inch thick, and uh, on the corners, you will know that they are uh, bent. Uh, I used a uh, 10 foot brake and tried to form it, couldn't do it, so therefore, I had to actually uh, put some pads between my knees and use an oxy settling torch and heat up the corners using a template to make certain that they are. Um, that would fit the corner that I wanted and so I had hot knees for a while but uh, I got a bend to where I uh, have two bends on it and it worked out quite well. A little bit of uh, ingenuity there to make it happen. The bed itself is is all fabricated by myself, my own design. You'll find that the rails are actually uh, made out of uh, uh, milking parlor pipeline and uh, what, now, what, what do you call that milking parlor milking pipeline for milk for uh which dairy farm did this come from this <laughs> it's not from my brother's farm but uh <laughs> i found it some person had it available i did some work for him so he gave me this what is the difference between that and just regular aluminum pipe um i don't know it's just it was actually this is actually stainless steel oh. so you'll find this is milking parlor stainless okay. steel and Delta. uh Tell us a little bit about this uh, this light back here. Okay, I have a high mount light on the back, and uh, I took and I turned down a piece of aluminum stock to fit the pipe, recessed it, and set it in. The center, the clear part of it, is actually from a 1969 Camaro uh, backup light lens, and uh, I cut the center out of it so I would have the circled rings, and um, and I have. Uh, light emitting diode light inside which is red in color so when you signal it comes on when you break it comes on when you put your lights on it comes on so it's a it's a high mountain light is what you want to call it okay so tell us a little bit about your built-in uh, cabinets you've got here now I know you did you did all the cabinets in here the this chest of drawers back here and storage and as well as the ones in the side here so um, just tell us a little bit about what you did here the cargo boxes were an afterthought um, I couldn't get everything into my box on top of the bed so therefore I fabricated a box on the inside I cut out the opening as you can see is diamond deck which diamond plate which also matches the the skirting of the uh, bed itself did stainless steel framework around it and inside we have all of our cleaning equipment on for the vehicle and on the other side of the bed itself we have um, our uh, grill and charcoal and some more cleaning wow. stuff so it's so, just that's, that's really nice uh, it's nice to make extra use of that storage down there so um, this one's also got the diamond plating on the top yes I took a um, <clears throat> A toolbox, I cut the bottom out of it 
and we can actually open up the top and inside there as we carry chairs and we also have a bedroll and, and a tent in there and my wife and I we've actually camped on top of the bed it works great it's uh, a two uh, it's a two-man tent and we've had great fun camping on it as well I bet you have now I hope this comes across well in the video but this is a I, how many how many feet wide is this it's really wide Do you know uh, what, man? this is about six and a half no excuse me seven feet wide and then tell us a little bit about the planking that you use down here because it's just Kay. not your average you know Walmart quarter inch thick uh, no I bought this is uh, Menards or yeah this, this 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 is actually Menards this is uh, um, pressure treated two by ten and uh, I actually did probably about two years I just uh, left it on there didn't do anything with it it got a little bit cup warp and so forth so I took it apart planed it down planed about one quarter of an inch off of it and then I did a rabbit joint along the edge and I then uh, put stainless steel down and bolted it from the back side and each piece has several stainless steel bolts that were welded onto it and that uh, keeps the Here, so you don't you don't see any of the bolts sticking through no and the reason for that is to to keep it concealed and looks makes the bed look nice uh, at first I did not bolt it down and what happened is that stainless steel when it gets warm it tends to bowl so I had to add a few more bolts to it to, to hold it down. So it, it works out quite well. It's dried out fairly well. There's no other treatment on that. It's just pressure treated. And that um, has worked very well for us. It's been built and on the road since 2004. Well, I tell you what, Dan, this has been a fantastic story, and, and what a beautiful vehicle here. Um, and I, I love these. I've seen just a couple of them. I'm kind of like you. I'm still looking at them going, I like that. That's something a little unusual. You don't see it everywhere. It's got the reminiscent of, of, a, of a truck, which we don't ever see as a, a, a something that's been restored. Uh, yet, function, you know, it functions uh, in the real world. Um, and what a, what a wonderful story. Uh, so thank you so much for sharing uh, your story with us. You're welcome. All right. Thank you.